It's Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm Steve Inskeep. And I'm Noel King. And I'm David First. The Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next here on WNYC. And then in 10 minutes at 9 o'clock, it's the BBC News Hour on 93.9 FM. Let's check in with London to see what they're working on. Good morning, WNYC. I'm James Menendez. Today on NewsHour, President Trump promises an orderly transition moments after Congress formally confirmed Joe Biden's victory in the presidential election. But they're still clearing up the damage after Trump supporters stormed the Capitol at his instigation. We'll have reaction from around the world. That's BBC NewsHour at 9 on 93.9 FM, WNYC. Later today on All of It, Alison Stewart speaks with author Charles Yu about his new short fiction piece, The Only Living Girl on Earth. That's coming up at noon here on WNYC. 31 degrees now, sunny today with a high of 43 this afternoon. It's 8.51. Support for WNYC comes from Hulu, presenting the original comedy series Rami. Creator, director, and star Rami Youssef is joined by Mahershala Ali for season two of this series about faith, family, and finding yourself. Rami is awards eligible and now streaming on Hulu. Drexel University. Drexel's academic model is designed to prepare visionary leaders to address the challenges of a changing world. More at drexel.edu slash ambition can't wait. A violent breach of the U.S. Capitol as supporters of President Trump disrupt the electoral vote tally confirming President-elect Joe Biden's victory. The behavior that we are witnessing is shameful, unpatriotic, and above all, it is unlawful. A stunning and violent moment in U.S. history. I'm Tanzina Vega, and that's next time on The Takeaway, weekday afternoons at 3 on 93.9 FM. How does what happened on two ends of Washington's Pennsylvania Avenue yesterday alter the policy and economic calculus? Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Noom, a personalized weight loss program designed to give people knowledge to set new goals and the tools to stick to them for good. Learn more at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com. And by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. I'm David Brancaccio. The White House released a statement attributed to Donald Trump after Congress had voted, saying the president now supports an orderly transition of power. The statement went on to say, quote, while this represents the end of the greatest first term in presidential history, it's only the beginning of our fight to make America great again. Others now see not just Trump hardliners who stormed the Capitol yesterday, but also Trumpism as disgraced. Ian Bremmer is president and founder of the political risk consultancy, the Eurasia Group. I think it's much deeper than Trumpism. I think what we have to understand is that today the United States is not only the most powerful country in the world, but it's also by far the most politically divided, the most politically dysfunctional of all of the world's advanced industrial democracies. What we saw yesterday could not have happened in Canada, in France, in Germany, in Japan. And we have to ask ourselves why. How did we get to the point that the institutions in the US were so eroded? President Trump says the election was rigged. He's wrong. He's lying to the American people. But the institutions do indeed feel rigged to the average Americans. And until that changes, The depths of this illegitimacy, inequality, are going to persist. They're even potentially going to deepen, especially on the back of this truly horrific crisis um, that is not just political, but of course also economic and health. Uh, And President Biden, President-elect Biden, takes office in the teeth of that. And you make the point that that erodes, as we move forward, some of joe biden's legitimacy but that'll play out in the policy agenda in the near term the fact that both of these georgia senate seats uh, will swing to the democrats i think actually why the markets have have risen that gives uh president-elect biden the ability to pass a lot more stimulus and relief for not just the average americans but also for blue states and red states and that matters but it's a band-aid 
And we need to recognize it as a Band-Aid. It does not address the deeper structural ills that exist in the American political system right now. That's well beyond a question for just the near-term policy agenda for the incoming president. Ian Bremmer, president and founder of the political risk consultancy Eurasia Group. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Business groups and corporations are condemning President Trump after the violence at the Capitol yesterday. Some of them were among Trump's biggest supporters. And one influential business group is calling for Trump's early removal using the cabinets and the vice president's constitutional authority. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer joins us now from Washington. Nancy, let's start with one of the biggest of the organizations, the National Association of Manufacturers. Yeah, it's a huge lobbying group, David. Uh, It represents thousands of manufacturers, large and small. Uh, Some of its biggest members are Pfizer, Toyota, and Exxon. And what did the association say in this statement? It didn't mince words. Uh, The statement said this is sedition and should be treated as such. And the association called for the president to be removed under the 25th Amendment. And what did other business leaders have to say? We heard from the likes of Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. Goldman Sachs issued a statement. Also, the head of the giant private equity group Blackstone, Stephen Schwartzman, said the outcome of the election is very clear. There must be a peaceful transition. Schwartzman is a major Republican donor. Uh, General Motors CEO Mary Barra tweeted that, quote, it's imperative we come together as a country. Of course, a peaceful transition is key to a functioning economy and businesses are already looking ahead to the Biden administration, anticipating more relief checks, which could give the economy a boost. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer, thank you. We alluded to markets there at the moment. The Dow future is up 122 points, four tenths of a percent. The S&P future up six tenths percent. The Nasdaq future up eight tenths percent. The Russell 2000 index of smaller companies up four tenths percent. There's news this morning that new claims for unemployment benefits after new layoffs dipped just slightly in the last week. That 787,000 figure could have been distorted by the New Year's holiday. The 10-year interest rate Still above 1% today after nine months, much closer to zero, 1.05% now. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance with the Name Your Price tool, offering a range of coverage and price options to choose from. Now that's Progressive. More at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. And by GEP, helping transform supply chains with strategies, services, and software, including GEP Smart and GEP Next, AI-based digital procurement and supply chain platforms. And by Fidelity Wealth Management, providing perspective on a client's entire financial picture. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. The Trump Department of Labor has just finalized a rule to make it easier for companies to treat workers as independent contractors. Starting in March, Marketplace's Samantha Fields reports. There are a whole lot of benefits and protections that come with being an employee of a company rather than a gig worker, including some pretty basic ones like being paid the minimum wage. Overtime pay, all kinds of workers' comp, access to health insurance. Rebecca Given is a professor at Rutgers University. She says the new rule would let companies like Uber, DoorDash, and others reclassify large numbers of employees as contractors. It outsources a lot of the costs and the responsibilities onto the workers. It saves money and it increases profit and it denies those workers protections. Given says it's likely the Biden administration will delay or roll back the rule. But David Weil, who ran the Department of Labor's wage and hour division under President Obama, says the issue isn't going anywhere. The debate of who should be protected by our workplace laws is very much a debate we're going to be having a lot of over the next few years. Both on the state and federal level. I'm Samantha Fields for Marketplace. And I'm David Brancaccio. You're listening to the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media. WNYC is supported by...